You can continue to take the beaten path of investing in stocks one by one. Or you can reach for Sector Spider ETFs. They divide the entire S&P 500 into nine distinct sectors, like financial, or technology. Simply choose the sectors that best match your investment goals. With Sector Spiders, you'll experience the diversification of mutual funds, the transparency of an index, and the all-day tradability of stocks. Ready to harness the power of a stock alternative? Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Go to SectorSpiders.com for perspectives containing this information. Read it carefully. Visit us at SectorSpiders.com. I'm Ron DeLegge, welcome to another episode of Marketplace Minute. Well, on today's episode, I'm gonna do a portfolio report card for Chris. He's a 47-year-old successful entrepreneur. He's got a $512,000 investment portfolio, and I'm gonna give him a report card on today's episode of A, B, C, D, or F. Now remember, if he gets an A, I get out my wallet and I pay him $100. And that, by the way, is a portfolio challenge I send out to all of our viewers. If your portfolio grades A on Ronda Leggy's portfolio report card, I pay you $100. Get in touch with me, PortfolioReportCard.com. We're going to look at five key aspects of Chris's portfolio, diversification, risk, cost, tax efficiency, and performance. And again, I'm going to give him a final grade. So let's look at the first area, which is diversification. Now the correct definition of diversification is a portfolio that has exposure to all the major asset classes. That includes stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, and cash. A portfolio that lacks exposure to the major asset classes, any one of these five, is deficient when it comes to diversification. Now although Chris has all of his money parked in just one fund, this is the Franklin Income Fund Class A shares, that's ticker symbol FKNIX. That's the bad news. He's got all his money in just one fund. The good news is he does have exposure to some major asset classes like U.S. stocks, like international stocks. He's also got some exposure to bonds and cash. That said, he lacks exposure to commodities. He also lacks exposure to TIPS, also known as Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and also to real estate. So those are three major asset classes right there that he is missing some exposure to. Next up is cost. And unfortunately, too many income investors, I think, are focused on yield so much that they completely ignore what the cost of that yield is. So in Chris's case, he told me very explicitly that the income that he's using for this fund or taking from this fund, that, that's all his own, only focus or only concern. He doesn't care about anything else. So we take a look at the 30-day SEC yield of this particular fund, which is at a, around 3.16%. Yet the fund's annual expenses are 0.62%. So in terms of the cost of that fund and what it's consuming, in terms of aiding up the yield, roughly 20% of this fund's cost is eating up that 30-day that SEC dividend yield. And so the point here is that that's way too much. That's way too much for any income investor to be losing 20% of your income to fund expenses. So on cost, I think Chris can definitely do a much better job. So next up is risk. One of the things I look for are portfolios that are compatible with not just a person's perception of themselves in terms of what types of risk they say they can take, but also whether the person's actual risk tolerance matches up with their investment portfolio. So in this particular instance, what can I say? Chris has all of his eggs in one basket, and if that one basket blows up, well, Chris's portfolio will blow up too. 
So in terms of diversifying his risk away from one particular company, in that sense, he hasn't done a very good job at all. Next up is tax efficiency. Something that all investors should do is take deliberate steps to minimize taxes. Now that means smart asset location and also tax harvesting when warranted. In this particular case, ticker symbol FKINX has a tax cost ratio, according to Morningstar, of 2.21%, meaning that shareholders of this fund over the past year have paid around 2% of their assets to taxes. So from an asset location perspective, that's another aspect of Chris's portfolio that we want to look at. Here too, he's not exactly minimizing to the max the negative impact of taxes. This money is all in a taxable account. So I think from a tax efficiency perspective, he can definitely do a better job. So what about the performance of Chris's portfolio? Well, from mid-July of 2013 to mid-July of 2014, ticker symbol FKINX gained 14.6% versus a 12.1% gain for a blended benchmark of index ETFs that have the same general asset mix. So Chris's performance actually was slightly better than our blended benchmark, which is good, but Chris's overall score, and we don't just look at performance, we have to look at cost, we have to look at, at tax efficiency, risk, diversification. So altogether, when we consider all of these key factors, Chris's final report card is a C. Chris's biggest risk, I think, with this portfolio design is a lack of diversification. This is true not just from an asset allocation perspective, but also from an asset location perspective. He's got all his nest egg concentrated in one nest, and that's problematic. And I think if Chris goes back to work also on his cost and minimizing the negative impact of cost, 20% of his income is being eaten by fund expenses. I think he's going to see much better cash flow in his pocket in terms of getting more income for his investments. If you'd like to get your own portfolio report card, get in touch with me. Go to PortfolioReportCard.com. I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide. Thanks for watching another episode of Marketplace Minute.